How's it going? Uh, Cover Killer Nation here, of course, really not as Cover Killer Nation as the man behind the the, uh, the glasses. I uh, wanted to offer you guys a, uh, a little bit of an update to certain things that were discussed about in this Getting Things Off My Chest, uh, I guess, series about two months ago, really the first part of July. And um, just so you know, this series has been powered by Patreon and it's been powered by those who have given to the, uh, the PayPal one-time donation link. Uh, both of those are the top links that you see in the description box if you want to get on board with that. It's what helps power this series. It's what helps power this channel. Uh, it's what keeps this whole thing going. And I thank everybody who has taken part in that. Uh, no, nothing is too small, is I guess what the, they say with those telethons and all that. But anyway, let's move into what I want to talk about. I don't want this to be too, too long, but I do have a couple things to say. Um, in the video in July, I was talking about my health, uh, more specifically uh, my knees, my back, the fact that uh, I have, uh, or had, should I say, the early stages of rheumatoid arthritis. And I have to say the word had, uh, because some tests that have been done recently have sort of pushed uh, my doctors away from that uh, potential diagnosis, which is good news in some ways, but bad news in other ways. Uh, it's good news considering uh, if you've done research on rheumatoid at all, uh, if it's something that you yourself are concerned about or if you have a loved one that has it, it is exceptionally debilitating. Whenever I got that uh, diagnosis, supposed diagnosis, uh, I was definitely a little fearful because of what the future really would hold with something like that. So that being off the table is it's actually really good news. I'm, I'm very happy with that. The bad news is, is that it still leaves me without a definitive answer about what is going on with me. Uh, for those who maybe didn't watch that last video, I've been suffering from, from very, very bad knee to lower back pain, inflammation that causes just deep redness and they are extremely sore. My, I, I live with pain daily is essentially the thing. Uh, whenever I'm having a good day, it's just moderately tolerable. Whenever I'm having a bad day, it's downright insufferable. So um, I don't like to show that side very often whenever I uh, do videos. However, if I'm attempting to shoot during a, a higher pain day, such as today, and encounter some issues or encounter some distractions based off of that and I have to shoot again, it gets me tremendously frustrated as you might imagine and you know sometimes I want to just get the shots done and I, I try my best not to sacrifice quality based off of how I feel. Uh, however at times uh, I'm a little hard on myself so at times I feel like I have done that and if that seems to be the case, if that feels like the case uh, if you watch a video and it doesn't seem like it's either the best representation, uh, I, I apologize for that because that's not my aim. My aim is for the best representation of a review of an album, either that or of a top ten list, whatever it may be. Um, I, I, sometimes, I guess, I just, you know, sometimes you throw a bad game, you know, you're a pitcher and you go out there and you've been dominant all season and you get knocked around, you know, it's just how it, I guess, sort of goes. You have to play the statistics, you know. Uh, unfortunately, the, the downside of 2,000 videos close to, you know, we're about 25 to 30 away, is that uh, every so often you will lay or, or pitch a dud. Uh, but that's kind of the update there. Uh, I have appointments scheduled for November, so that will be the next chance that I have to maybe get some definitive answers. Uh, one of them is also with a specialist. In, and what's interesting is that even though I don't have rheumatoid uh, I will be going to a rheumatoid specialist, a rheumatologist, uh, in order to hopefully get more answers toward uh, what this is, since it is not that. Um, and that was at the behest of uh, my uh, my doctor, saying that it's still good to do that, considering uh, if, if anything, they can maybe eliminate some other options uh, from the list and narrow it down further. So that's what I'm going to hope happens. Or uh, the best case scenario would be that I would get the answer. Uh, of course, about uh, a month ago, uh, really in late July, I was hospitalized 
which sucked. Uh, chronicled that a little bit in one of the, pre the really the last vlog that we did, and um, that's not what I want to talk about. I, I really don't want to talk about that because uh, that has been deemed as an isolated incident, and thus far, that's absolutely true. I've had nothing uh, really of that sort of thing happen to me ever since then. Uh, I've had bad heartburn or acid reflux, you know, shit like that. That's par for the course. Uh, but nothing that has felt like it has required some sort of uh, extra care aside from, you know, uh, over-the-counter pums. <laughs> but um, one thing that kind of uh, amazed me, and the funny thing is, is that it amazed me, but it didn't amaze me. And I'm, I'm going to try to make sense out of all that as I talk about this. I'm going to try to be a little bit, uh, you know, I, I can't be full disclosure about this. I don't want to be, but I'm going to at least say some things. Um, a lot of you out there I've noticed on uh, social medias or you've talked to me directly about, you know, situations in your life that have been extremely difficult. Uh, you've talked about perhaps uh, living with a family that has some really big problems or, you know, you've lived with a, a mate, you know, a significant other that hasn't given you what you want, either that or, you know, you've tried to give them everything that they want, and it just seems like there's no reciprocity. Uh, you're living with your own personal demons, or you have, uh, it seems like you're, you're drifting away from some of your friends, and whenever I was hospitalized with somebody that I uh, respected a whole heck of a lot uh, prior to this, basically was posting about how they were hoping that uh, whatever it was that had me in the hospital would take me out, that it would be the end of me. Um, that it would just, that I would just die, I guess. I mean, just someone was wishing my death. And it's not exactly new <laughs> doing something like this, you know. Whenever you become a little bit more, I guess, known on YouTube, or whenever you've agitated some people, uh, see Slayer fans, see Pantera fans, see Disturbed fans, whatever. <coughs> whenever you've um, agitated some people, even inadvertently, it's something that happens. People wish some pretty terrible things on you because it's the internet, and they are, uh, they feel that they're shielded by anonymity. Uh, but this is somebody that I've known for practically my whole life. Um, somebody local, somebody who uh, I respected a whole hell of a lot. We weren't friends, really, for the past couple of years. Um, it, it's something where things have definitely changed. Apparently, in, in some way, I was, I betrayed this person. I, I don't really know how. I, <laughs> I've never really understood that. Uh, that has never been something that has been revealed. But for it to be taken to that level and and make it to that level, and just, it was very shocking. And it's surprising considering it's a person where a lot of what they say or a lot of what they do doesn't shock me because, you know, whenever you know somebody, it just is part of their personality. It's what you recall about them or what you know about them. Um, but this was surprising. I, I was really taken aback by that. Um, the funny thing about it, though, is that it didn't hurt me that much. Um, I mention it because I will tell you guys all straight up that are dealing with some some really harsh realities or some very difficult moments in your life is that, you know, sit back, breathe a little bit, um, and really don't focus on what has already happened. Focus on the next step. You know, you should definitely pay respect to the past because they say that if you don't, you're doomed to it. But you also have to have a good future sense. You have to know that going forward that something is out there for you and that something that you're working toward is, is worth the examination if you're putting that much blood, sweat, and tears into it. You know, you may not get the result that you're hoping for. You may not, you know, work to be in a band and then have, you know, your product sell a million copies or, you know, you may not become the world's best blacksmith, or the world's best street paver, whatever it may be. Uh, but you can't just sit around and dwell on something that has already happened. Because it's already happened. There's nothing that can be changed about it. And I know that there are a lot of things that, that I'll think about whenever it comes to uh, years ago. And it's something that's a little bit unforgiving for me, considering thoughts all the time. 
you know, 24-7, 365, so many that I have to control them. Uh, if overthinking isn't a disease, um, it really shouldn't be. It, 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 I used to say that it should be, but I disagree with myself now because, um, you know, you see how folks handle uh, depression and bipolar and things like that, um, how they believe that just about any old person that's a little bit blue because they got a D on a math test is depressed. Um, but uh, there is there are people out there that just think constantly, and it's not always under their control, which sucks. But uh, you know you have to have a good future prospect, and you have to use and channel some of your abilities and some of your the positive aspects of your attitude to really uh, cause a little bit of change in your own life and cause a little bit of change in the lives of others. Um, earlier today, uh, before I recorded this video. I saw a quote that really has become, it's very true, you know, it's true for me, it's true for the gentleman who made it, which is John Grisham, he stated that, uh, you know, he never really had his, uh, he never really had any plans to be a writer, it wasn't a childhood dream, um, if he hadn't become a lawyer first, he would never have become a writer, because the events from A Time to Kill were based off of a case that he had tried, and he tried to represent that and replicate that as best as he could within the confines of the novel. Obviously, you know, not, you know, using actual names and places and things like that, instead often to, you know, do the whole, you know, names and the places that have changed to protect the innocent, blah, blah, blah. But that's powerful right there, considering here's a guy who went through, you know, he went through law school, he became a lawyer. You know, that was his designed intention, his goal, his his dream for his life. And then he just got this itch. He got this itch to write this book. You know, it, it was something that he wanted to do. He had never written anything before. He, he wanted to just do this. And he did. And now look at who John Grisham is. He's a best-selling author. He is very well respected. You know, he's got a fan base that's worldwide. Whenever a book of his drops, it's one that is seen as an immediate pickup for many, myself included. I'm a big John Grisham fan as far as reading is concerned. I also love a lot of, you know, Stephen King, some Dean Coons here and there. Um, and there's, you know, Chuck Palahniuk. There's a lot of great stuff out there, but Grisham, I just really dig the way he, he presents things because it's very... You don't get sort of bogged down by legal jargon. And that's... And that's really what is just, it's amazing to me that we could be taken on so many different paths during this life and not, not end up being known for the thing that we were hoping for, but still feel a lot of great, you know, I guess just a lot of great pride for what we have done. Um, whenever I walked into college, uh, whenever I walked into university, I did not have uh, fixations on becoming an online celebrity. Uh, which I, those two words to me still feel really ugly and wrong, like I'm lying about that. Um, but I didn't have any fixations that this is what I was going to be doing for, you know, potentially a living whenever I was 32 years old. You know, I went in there figuring that I was going to uh, maybe become a, a high level member of management at the company, either that or I was going to own my own store, perhaps do some some technical work, I was going to be a bit of a jack of all trades, you know, there's a lot of things that I know, I'm, you know, I know a little bit about everything, but I'm a master of absolutely nothing, and I like that because it allows you to adapt a little bit, it gives you the ability to wear some different hats and do so proficiently. Uh, I didn't know that this is where I was going to go, uh, I started this channel, as I stated way back in the first vlog, uh, for therapy, and now therapy has become a... A wonderful thing that um, has led me down so many different paths that uh, I, I'm just excited to see what the future holds. So never ever think that you are, you're, you're just boned, you know, that you're just done. You know, there's a light at the end of every tunnel. And uh, no matter what people say about you or what people say to you or even really what people do to you, uh, you are the master of your universe. Once again, a uh, big time thank you to those who have uh, become patrons, those who have donated to the one-time uh, PayPal link, both of which are in the description box below for those that want to get on board. And uh, like I said, everything helps, um, no matter how big or how small. Uh, you guys are wonderful. 
we've passed some big time milestones. I have a brand new couch, which is great for me because that other one was, uh, oh man, was it on its last legs. You know, I have an AC in here now, which, you know, those were generous donations, one of which from my father that uh, you saw in one video earlier this year. And uh, the other was actually from a friend of uh, the family who was, uh, was getting rid of it so thanks to the Brennans for this uh, for this couch that rules um, you guys are the best you know um, that's all I have um, thanks again for everybody who watched this I know I said it was gonna be shorter and I lied because I get to talking and that's what happens um, I'll see you guys next time take care